tutorial we're going to explain how to calculate extraterrestrial radiation and day lengths. Here we have data for the Belmes weather station which is located at 38.25 degrees north. This is the latitude. We have a set of data, for instance, we have the day of year, which would be December 31st, and we're going to use only in this tutorial the values for solar radiation that appear in this column. Okay, first of all, we need to calculate for each day the solar declination uh, that will be used for calculating both extraterrestrial radiation and the events. The equation for, for calculating solar declination is the one appearing here. If we use a pocket calculator, the uh, sine cosine functions will use uh, angles in degrees. If we are using Excel, as in this case, we need to use the angles in, rad in radians. In this case, the equation could be like this, 3.45 pi cosine of 2 pi Day of year minus 172 over 365. That's the equation that we will put for this cell, 23.45, etc. And we will get this data that will appear here in this column. That provides the declination in degrees. Then we convert the declination in degrees to rad. How we do that? But simply by multiplying by p and then dividing by 108. Okay, so now in this column we have the values of solar declination in radians. Next, we're going to calculate a variable called hs which is half of the day length expressed in, radi in radians. To do that, we apply this equation. We apply this equation. This is the R cosine of minus the tangent of the latitude. See that the latitude is now expressed in radians. We need to do that always when we are working with Excel multiplied by the tangent of the solar declination, which was the previous column. Now that we have the, uh, the variable hs, we could go and directly calculate day length, which is this column, applying this equation, multiplying hs by 24 and divided by p, we get the day length in hours. We see that in December in Belmont we have day lengths around 9 hours. Okay, next we calculate a variable which corrects solar radiation data for the distance from the Earth to the Sun. This is the variable d sub r. If we used a pocket calculator, we would apply this equation, but as we are uh, using RAM, we applied this equation. Okay, then we calculate VR by putting here the equation for operating with radians. Then we apply the equation for uh, extraterrestrial radiation, R sub A, which is this one, I just I have just divided the calculation in two steps. First, I calculate this triple product. I call it F1, and is the product of the sign of the latitude. Look that the latitude is in radians, multiplied by p divided by 180, multiplied by the sign 
of the declination and then multiply it by the value of hs. The second uh, term of this equation is cosine of the latitude, cosine of declination and sine of hs. That's the one appearing here. Cosine of the latitude in radians, cosine of the declination and sine of hs. Okay, and then we can multiply to get Ra, we just multiply 37.4, multiply it by dr, it's seen here, plus the sum of the previous two columns. Then we get the extraterrestrial radiation. In this case, is around 15 megajoules per square meter per day. This would be the total solar radi radiation that would reach this location on that given day if there was no atmosphere. On the average, the solar radiation reaching any place on the Earth can be calculated using that extraterrestrial radiation and taking into account the degree of clear sky. The degree of clear sky is the quotient between the actual, uh, actual duration of clear sky over the maximum number of hours of clear sky, which is exactly equal to the day length. We don't need to apply this equation in this case, because we have measured solar radiation in this weather station, is this color. Okay? But, as we have this equation, we can deduce the fraction or the degree of clear sky using the measured solar radiation, the calculated extraterrestrial radiation, and these two coefficients. Note that if the uh, sky is completely overcast, the fraction of clear sky would be zero, and in the best, in the maximum uh, case, the fraction of clear sky would be one, when the sky is clear throughout the day. Now, applying this equation, we can calculate here the degree of clear sky using this equation, and we have these values. As we know, the, the, these values have to lie between 0 and 1 in this column. We take or correct any values that are negative. For instance, this one would become 0 because the fraction of clear sky cannot be below 0. It can uh, also not exceed 1. Therefore, in this Column. Finally, we have the corrected values for the fraction of clear sky that only go from 0 to 1. For instance, this value would be a completely overcast day, uh, while this value would be almost a clear day. So, uh, in summary, we have calculated extraterrestrial radiation, we have calculated the degree of clear sky, which we will use later for calculating net radiation, and we have discussed the calculation of solar declination and the length.